So let's let's talk about this cadenza. Yes. Um, it's uh, it's not a chest of drawers, that's for sure. No, it's not a chest of drawers. <laughs> it's a, it's a big uh, kind of entry level luxury sedan. Yeah, so it's a full size sedan. It's the sedan that uh, it's the step up from the Optima, the uh, and a step down from the K900. Right. The a lot of uh, it's, it's a strange segment of car. I mean, America's is sort of E class, what should they call them? The uh, the, the large. Its competition would be the Chrysler 300 and the Impala, along with the Lexus ES. Yes, 350, uh, the, the Buick LaCrosse. But I, I think the most direct competition, because if you're talking, this is a front wheel drive platform, sure. right? Is the Toyota Avalon. Yes. Yes. So, so obviously they're shooting for uh, the higher luxury cars like the ES. 350, but in real terms, this competes with the Avalon. Uh, it starts at about uh, $33,000 and it goes up to we're in the SXT model. Yeah, this one starts at 44, I think. Yeah, so, by the time you fully loaded it. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, you're gonna have to navigate as we do this. Uh, so, tell me which way to go. Oh, we've got uh, some. Look, they're taking pictures up here. Uh, right on VA211 West. Okay. How far do we go on that? Uh, we're 13.8 miles. Okay, good. So we got 13.8 miles to talk about this car. Right. Before we have to do some more navigating. Um, Here's one of the things that I'm impressed with. Yeah? So, uh, 22 years ago, when Kia first hit the US market, they were the bottom of the JD Power and Associates Initial Quality Award. Yeah, like the very there bottom. wasn't anybody below them. They were like rock bottom. They were the worst part of the barrel. Yes. And now, or last year, 2015, they're number one. It's only taken them 22 years, but a lot of the car companies that were there in between have now evaporated. Saab, Suzuki, right? These are Scion. all these are all car companies yeah. that are now gone. Uh, Pontiac that uh, Kia outlasted, and let's talk about Kia because this is a question that was asked at the press conference, and I think it's important, right? They're owned or 35% owned by Hyundai. Yes. So the two car companies are, uh, in a way, siblings, but. They are also incredibly competitive in the US. It's like they start with the same platform, they start with the same sort of base clay model and then they build different cars on top of them. For instance, uh, they have the new Nero coming, which is the same platform as Hyundai's Ico uh, Ionic. Yep. But the uh, Ionic is, of course, a small size sedan the size of a Civic, and the Nero is a small compact CUV. And so they kind of go different directions, and and it was pointed out that there were fierce competitors in the U.S., but uh, not so not so fierce when you get abroad. So here's another one of the press cars coming right by us. Um, what do you think? You like the look of it? You know, the front end is very outstanding. This new grill, this new uh, they call it the Tiger Nose. Yeah, it's a different version of the Tiger Nose than we've seen before. I really like the front end. The rear end is very generic. The tail lights have this Z sort of shape in them, they're LEDs, and they have these sort of piano keys on the inside. But apart from that, it could pretty much be any generic Asian brand. Yeah, so, um, you know, Peter Shire, who came from Audi fame, uh, became the head designer for both Kia and Hyundai, and he um, brought this kind of Germanic, uh, clean design. So you, there is a lot of Audi in this, right? You see these linear kind of lines. Uh, they said that their inspiration for this, by the way, this car was designed in California. They have a design studio in California. In Irvine. Yeah, they said it was, you know, the uh, tailored athlete. That was a word they used. Absolutely, and, and I think those are a lot of marketing speaks. When you actually look at all of Kia's, that has one thing in common across the entire brand, and that is there is a single straight line that goes from the tail light to the headlight and that is kind of their, their theme. I mean the Tiger Nose grill is the current face of Kia but as we all know those things change over time and they come up with new looks, new faces, that's what fashion, that's what uh, happens when you design cars. The one thing that's remained consistent is this single line that goes from tail light to headlight. Yeah, and uh, you know, Kia ha has an interesting product mix. Obviously, their best selling car in America is the Soul, right? That sells over 100,000 units. And this car, um, in all of its 
first previous generation incarnation sold only 28,000 units in America. Now, they said that as a, if it was a big number, but let's face it, 28,000 units isn't a huge number for a car in America when you know Ford sells 100, well, 450,000 F-150s a year. Sure. Right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's fairly small, but it's still, of course, economically good for them because the larger the car, the more profit you make on the car. So they are probably making double the profit on this than they're making on the Optima. But the Optima, they say, really defines the brand, and this is kind of the step up from the Optima. You know, I was just uh, driving a competitor to this in your hometown, Portland, right. the Lacrosse, and, and the reason, if, I, if we're being completely uh, blunt, the reason the Lacrosse is in America is because it's a very popular car in uh, China. Right. Right. So they build it for China, and then they also sell it in America because the cost of actually developing the car was borne out in China. Exactly. And so they sell a million vehicles a year on the Lacrosse. Two hundred of thousand of those are in the U.S. The rest are in China, and the rest of the world, right. somewhat. Yeah. So it's yeah, we can thank China for the success of the continuing success of Buick. And this car sells very well in Asia, right? As well. So, so yeah. So, so if they had to build this uh, cadenza for America, it would never happen. But since the development cost is borne by other parts of the country, then they can sell it here. There's an interesting uh, sort of other component to it now, which is, of course, they have the West Point Georgia factory, which uh, they've invested a huge amount of money in. And then now they have a new factory that they have just built in Mexico, which tends Monterey. to build smaller cars in Monterey. That's going to build the Forte, which isn't a good seller for them, actually, in the United States. I mean, Forte is at the bottom of the list of the compact cars that they sell in the United States. But they're really trying to make Kia an American brand. And I always see the big difference between Kia and Hyundai is that Kias are kind of the cool, hip, you know, they're the Dodge versus the Chrysler, yeah. in a sense. They're the cool, hip cars, whereas Hyundai is kind of more the old man, kind of more the conservative. The more traditional. The more traditional, say, yeah. They would say, yeah. By the way, uh, I had a conversation with the Hyundai guys and uh, you know it's pronounced differently in different parts of the world. So some people say Hyundai, right? Yeah, which they do in England. It's right. Hi Hyundai. Yeah, and, and, and here it's rhymes with Sunday, so it's Hyundai. And apparently that was a mistake by the original general, the general manager, who uh, came out and said, "Look, just pronounce it Hyundai like Sunday." And that wasn't something that had been passed by the Koreans, but. Once you said it at a press conference, you kind of stuck with it. Now, they did revise the engine in this car, right. uh, so they actually made it a little bit less powerful. I think it's got three less horsepower at 290 and a few pound-feet of torque less, but they did add a uh, eight-speed automatic transmission, so it is getting one mile per gallon more than the outgoing model. I think it was uh, 20, oh, I have to look it up in my notes. I don't want to say it. Give it in your notes, what, uh, what the MPG is combined. It. Um, anyway, it's one more, but then the APA has changed their um, cycle in terms of how they actually rate the cars. Uh, and so if you went under the old cycle, last year's cycle, it's probably getting 2 MPG better than the outgoing car. So it's 20, 28, 23 combined. Nine, 23 combined, yeah. Um, so, and then the, and this new, you've touched on something that's really interesting here is they are the only manufacturer who manufacture a front-wheel drive car in America that make their own transmission. Yeah, speed yeah. Everybody um, else is like a ZF. Right. And I think that's interesting because when there's a company like ZF out there that makes such great transmissions, why would you do it yourselves? And then you suddenly forget it's a Korean company and they do everything differently and they buck the system and they always win and they, they, they have a way of winning, a way of succeed, uh, succeeding at everything. So um, another thing that they've, of course, done is increase the amount of safety tech in here and right. so we've got all kinds of uh, safety tech and probably the most interesting or annoying depending on your point of view is this uh, lane keep basically I just turned it on right there so it, it sees the line and uh, it's uh, only annoying Roman because you can't keep in the lane <laughs> <laughs> I just find the beeping really really annoying um, so let me go let me show you again let's see if you'll do it this yeah I just I just find that um, yeah Anyway, it is what it is. The other bit that's kind of interesting is it has blind spot monitoring with a twist. Yeah. So let's say there's a car in your blind spot and uh, you turn on your turn signal and you're going to merge into that car. Basically, uh, this car will break its outside wheels and give you a little nudge back into... Let me try it. Here's, here's the... I'm going to try it. And I probably scared him and it didn't do it. But it's supposed to do it. So it's supposed to do it. Did you turn off the lane departure? You know, no, it might not on. be on here. Let me see if it's even on. 
there it wasn't on so that's why yeah, you yeah. do it now yeah. it's on so so if it senses a car uh in your blind spot and you're about to merge into it it'll actually break your outside wheels and give you nudge back into um so they so tell like, us so they tell us <laughs> well it's, it's another step toward autonomous cars right, right. that's really where we're at and we're we're probably at level one level two autonomy here whereas level five is the true autonomous car i thought there was something else interesting that i learned today that i didn't know is that lebron james the basketball player yes. approached kia and asked to represent them after oh, dude, the K900 came out. That oh, I, sounds like a marketing ploy to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my like journalism spidey sense is right. like tingling. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it this way. The, 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 his like, his like uh, PR people went to Kia, right? And thought to themselves, this might be a good fit for him. I, I, I doubt that he actually picked up the phone, right? right. Hey, this is LeBron. <laughs> right. I would like to try your K900 and represent you as a brand. <laughs> However, the NBA has turned out really well for Kia and uh, they again informed us today, apart from soccer, they were the first uh, car company to be represented on the jerseys of major sports in the United yeah, States. Cool. So they're really, they, they know culture, they know pop culture, they know how to integrate into them. And that's why I like the brand so much in a sense too, because it's all about real lives, real people. Whereas I think the other side, which is Hyundai, is they're kind of missing that connection to the real world. I think these guys are trying to become very pop culture oriented in, in American culture. Here comes another one, it's about to pass us. So I'm gonna try this again. Now I've got it on. We got lane keep on. I'm gonna signal over here. There's a car there, and um, yeah, no nudge. No, that was weird. No, I didn't get a nudge that time. You got lots of beeps though. I got lots of beeps. Yeah. Anyway, there's there's the back of the car in a little different color. We're in white. Uh, so there's two unique features about this car. I always try to find the unique features, and you pointed out one of them while we stopped at our little rest stop, and that is, well, you tell them, what about the doors? What's cool about the doors? Yeah, they've, they've increased the dent resistance of the doors uh, up to 18%. Now, we, we you know, Roman brought this up to me again, is that was the original Scion idea that was sort of a plastic material too. But I think they've done this with actually steel, and that is that they've made the doors so it's harder to actually put dents and dings in the doors. I love that because there's nothing worse than having a car that you absolutely love and, and you love to own and yet it starts to look worn and tattered and especially with there goes the lane assist yeah, again I'm looking um, for my drive mode so like I want to try sport mode then then you have this car that starts where the seats wear out and where you get dings and bumps and scratches in it I hate that about it but you love your car so much the other cool feature here is a lot of the car companies that Ford introduced this uh, when you walk up to the back of the car, you kind of kick your foot underneath it and it opens up and he does it right. Right. These guys are taking it to the next logical step, which is basically you walk up to the back of the car, as long as your key's in the pocket, the car is locked, the trunk will open after a few seconds. You yeah. don't have to like kick trying to find that little sensor. Right. I thought that was smart. So let me switch it from, now we're in uh, smart mode, but I'm going to go to, that's comfort. Uh, that's eco, and now, now I'm in sport, sport mode. Yeah, and so what sport mode does is it, it uh, basically uh, makes the steering a little bit heavier. It still feels very luxury car oriented. Let's see if I floor it, eight speed. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's get a little bit of the beans. 290 horsepower will do that. I've got paddle shifters if I ever felt uh, my oats. <laughs> you were crazy enough to use <laughs> I was crazy enough uh, to. We're driving through Virginia where we were warned that 15 miles an hour over causes you to go to jail, so. Oh, and it also, you can, you can tell it changes the shift points. Uh, so that now I'm in a 3,000 RPM even though, uh, you know, I'm kind of trucking along here. But you've still got beeping every time you're yeah. in lane. Yeah. yeah, it's good. You know, it's, it's, it's sporty. It's big. It's, uh, it did um, lighten the car, but it was only minusculely. Yeah. It's, it, it was like one lunch. Yeah. They, light, they lightened it by a lunch, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is most certainly a, a big ass. <laughs> Family sedan. It's, right. it's not a canyon carver. But 290 horsepower, V6 engine. I mean, it seems to cope pretty front -wheel well. Drive, yeah. yeah, it's front wheel drive. They say it's got the biggest amount of interior space. I believe it was 107.8 cubic inches of yep. interior room. Yep. So I haven't sat in the back, but it does look monstrously uh, comfortable back there. I'm comfortable with a car this size. I mean, I love the Chrysler 300. I, I love the Impala. Those are kind of cars I like. The only thing, uh, and the new Lincoln Continental, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I still don't like the idea that it's just front wheel drive and there's no all wheel drive option. Dude, I was just barely nudging those lines and it's beeping at me. It's just, yeah, I just find it really annoying. You know the car hates you, right? Yeah, it doesn't like me. So I, I'm old school, I'm gonna turn off all these uh, 
at ease and just uh, sit back and relax. Yeah, there's a sense of quality about this car. You know, it feels uh, well put together. It feels expensive. Uh, and it is expensive, you know, 44000 We don't have a Monroe in here, do we? So we don't know. But no, do for, for the, uh, uh, this has three trim levels. Yeah. They start with the premium. And then they have the, which is 30, uh, under 32. Right, but then 895 destination. Right. They always, so, always they have that $1,000, give or take right, destination. By the time you get there. Uh, would you buy a BMW instead? I don't know. Maybe you would. You probably wouldn't get a five series for that, but you get a three series, well, you know, well equipped. Well, you're going to get rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive. Obviously, right. you're going to get a much smaller car. The question is, would I buy an Avalon? Uh, would I buy a, you know, a Chrysler 300 or LaCrosse? Um, See, my my problem. I, mean, I, I I have a problem in a sense too with the Avalon is that it's still one of those Toyotas that is kind of soulless. They've done some great things with the brand to make the cars more exciting, but the Avalon just seems to be, uh, you know, it's you know, okay. You know, this is a little bit of a, a cop up, but it's actually true. I don't like to judge a car after being behind the wheel for 20 minutes. It's not fair to you guys, and it's not fair to the yeah. manufacturer. You know, you got to live with the thing. So when we get it back in Colorado. We'll do a proper review. We'll do some zero to 60 times on it. We'll kind of live with it. We'll see how it does, you know, as uh, a, a daily transport. And until then, I think uh, it's a solid effort. You know, it's it's not revolutionary. It's evolutionary, the yes. change from the previous one. Yeah. Uh, and overall, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's very competitive. Is it better than the competition? Um, hard to say right I, now. I think you definitely have to drag race it against the Avalon and see <laughs> exactly. which wins. Yeah, that's the way we figure it out. We'll go for pink slips. Guys, thanks for watching. And Nick, thank you for joining us. If people want to check out your new YouTube channel, where do they go? Yeah, just go to YouTube slash Test Miles and you can see all of our latest videos, uh, long form and how, how we treat our vehicles, which is a lot less reverent than uh, this gentleman here. <laughs> and remember, check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course, real world driving reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the 2017 Kia Cadenza. And this is a very nice entry-level luxury sedan. But I'm betting there's a good chance that you guys have never even heard of the Cadenza, let alone put it on your shopping list. And that's a shame. And I'll tell you why, coming up next on the Fast Lane Car.